Full support of the so-called illegal immigration stone road is a moral obligation for world Jewry and a Christian duty for its friends. Stone's reportage created a vast reservoir of sympathy for the new Jewish exodus. His series in the New York paper PM shored up the paper's circulation, and Stone became a favorite on the lecture circuit. Later published as a book, which became a bestseller, Underground to Palestine, you will find, if you look in the periodicals of the day, that it, will, that it was advertised virtually in every Jewish and Zionist publication in the United States. And I would say that next to Leon Uris's Exodus, Stone's book was the most responsible for producing a wave of sympathy and support for the plight of the Jewish DPs who sought only one goal, that of settlement in Palestine. Less known and generally ignored entirely by most of his biographers is his second book, I would suggest actually virtually unknown or not remembered at all, called This is Israel, a paean to the Jewish state for which Stone wrote the text, which was accompanied by beautiful photos of the new state taken by Robert Kappa, Jerry Cook, and Tim Goodall. The book came out, I think, in 1949. In that book, Stone referred to newborn Israel as a tiny bridgehead against 30 million Arabs, and he argued that Israel's precarious borders were made for a gerrymandered state and were almost indefensible. He stressed that among the leaders of the Arab invading forces were Nazi collaborators, the white main one being the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, Haj Amin al Hassani, and the head of the Arab Liberation Army, Fazwa al Kabuchi, who had led the pro fascist revolt against the British in Iraq in 1941. Stone wrote The German Nazis, Polish reactionaries, Yugoslav Chetniks, and Bosnian Muslims flocked into Palestine to wage the war against the Jews. When it came to the issue of why the Arabs fled in the face of Jewish resistance to their armed aggression, Stone was clear. Ill-armed, outnumbered, however desperate their circumstances, he wrote, the Jews stood fast. The response of the Palestinians was simply to flee. First the wealthiest families, Stone wrote, and while the Arab guerrillas were moving in, the Arab civilian population was moving out. The exodus was so alarming to the Arab Higher Committee, he wrote, that it asked neighboring Arab companies, neighboring Arab countries, to refuse visas to these refugees and to seal the border against them. The truth is, as Michael C. Kotzen wrote in The New Republic this past February, Izzy Stone's writings shatters basic premises endorsed by people today who share Stone's political leanings but reject the legitimacy of Israel as a Jewish state. Those whose journey Stone wrote about were not imperialist colonizers, colonizers to Stone. Palestine, he wrote, was not merely the one possibility for a new life, was not merely a place of refuge, but the country to which the people want to go. Why, Stone asked, should people reject their national aspirations? Are they, he questioned, any less worthy of respect than those of any other oppressed people? Abandoning his short-lived advocacy of a binational state, Stone gave his support to the 1947 UN partition plan that the Arab nations unanimously rejected. Rather than being agents of an imperial power based in Europe, Kotzen puts it, they saw themselves as exiles returning to the homeland of their people. The true colonialists of the time were the officials of the British Empire who strove to keep the Jews out who regarded and treated them as illegal immigrants. As